Guys, today an updated guide on New Villet. He's having a rerun soon, so it's time for me to tell you about my updated thoughts regarding his themes, builds, playstyle, and so on. New Villet is honestly a character that needs no presentation, because everybody knows he's a very good unit and probably the best main DPS in the game. He's also one of the easiest characters to use in the game, if not the easiest, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have to follow any rule, in that there are still things you need to master in order to optimize his gameplay and his themes. Truthfully, his playstyle is pretty straightforward, just use the elemental skill burst to create balls on field and then absorb them by holding the charge attack button to shoot incredibly powerful beams to absolutely pulverize any opponent on site. Here comes the first complication. There are two ways to hold the charge attack button with New Villette. The first is the normie way, where you just keep holding the charge attack button for the whole charge time. The second is the cultured player way. Basically, you hold the charge attack button for a split second and then you release it. This will cancel the charge animation and make the loadup for the actual charge attack faster. If you do this for every charge attack in the rotation for him, so 3 or 4, it will save him a few seconds. At first glance, it might not feel like a lot, but it makes a difference, because it makes it easier for him to fit into tight buff windows. For example, Kazuo's buffs, Furina's buffs, and most importantly, the Sacrificial Jade weapon. The Sacrificial Jade positive effects just end completely if you stay on field for more than 10 seconds with the holder. If that happens, you'd have to stay off field for at least 5 seconds with him in order to regain them. And this is an annoyance that I'm sure everybody will be happy to avoid. For the rest, it's obviously a very good tech to use always, and it's very easy to learn as well. Like, uh, you really only need to hold the charge attack button for a shorter time, can't be that hard. The other thing I want to say here is that you shouldn't over underestimate his elemental burst and skill damage. First and foremost, he's for sure a charge attack damage dealer, but his burst and skill can be nice nukes. I'm saying this because at times I see people that just leave his burst and skill talent at level 1, and I don't think that's very good. This is more important on Vaporite's teams than on other teams, since both the burst and skill have pretty nice single hit potential that can trigger vaporites pretty consistently, so it's great for that type of team. For other scenarios, it's not as good in terms of damage, but it's still nice because it's front-loaded damage. Numilet is without a doubt massive in terms of rotation damage, but it can feel a bit slow because of how long it takes to get the most out of his charge attacks. In that sense, the instant damage his elemental skill and burst provide can feel pretty good. For example, they can be pretty useful to finish off a mob or a wave after you use a charge attack and and they're left with just low HP. So even though their numbers might not look great at a glance, don't just ignore them. Next I will talk themes and rotations. Let me remind you that if you enjoy my channel but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really helps me notice your support. First I talk about these rotations, since it's something I need you to know fully before I talk about these themes. As I said earlier, Nubilet creates hydrospheres to the elemental skill and burst, and with those he can shoot his charge attacks. It's not like he can't use charge attacks without absorbing the balls, but if you don't, the charge time of the charge attacks becomes much longer than normal. An elemental burst creates 6 spheres, while an elemental skill creates 3, and the charge attack can absorb 3 at most in a single instance. This means that, at minimum, with a skill and burst, you can do 3 charge attacks in a rotation. However, you can also do 4. His elemental skill is a 12 seconds long cooldown, so if you run 24 seconds long rotations or longer, you can use it twice in a rotation and create 3 more spheres. This is great, because it not only increases the rotation damage, but it also generates more particles for him. If you don't use his skill twice, his energy requirements shoot up significantly. This is all kinda obvious, but the more interesting part is the order in which these two elemental skills and elemental bursts should be used in the rotation. I will give you a very simple rule of thumb to remember. You should never wait more than 12 seconds to use the second elemental skill after you use the first. Let me show you why with an example. First, you start the rotation with an elemental skill from Nubilet. Then you go in with your support to set up the buffs and so on. Then you go back in with Numilet to use a charge attack. After that, you use his elemental burst to create six spheres, and right after you use another charge attack. Then you go back out to your support to reapply buffs, like for example with Kazua, and then you go back in with Numilet. At this point, you should still have three spheres left from the last elemental burst, so you should get another charge attack 
and then you use a second element to skill. You absorb those spheres yet again for another charge attack and the rotation ends. And there is a big, big problem here. On the start of the next rotation, you won't have your elemental skill ready. And that's because you didn't line up your elemental skill cooldowns correctly. So it is what I do with most of my new villette rotations. I start with this elemental skill, then I go in with supports, then go in with new villette again to use a charge attack and another elemental skill instead of the burst. Then after my second charge attack, I'll use the elemental burst and I'll have six spheres ready for two more charge attacks later in the rotation. Of course, this is not the only good way to do it, but by doing it like this, you'll always have the elemental skill ready when you need it and you'll always be able to use four charge attacks per rotation. In terms of teams, I'm sure the mindset most people have when it comes to Nubilet is something like, a, oh, it should obviously always be used with Furina, nothing else matters. And while I don't mean to necessarily mock this point of view, I definitely disagree with it. New Villette was a very good unit even before Furina came out, and I think even now it makes sense not to use Furina on his teams. And not in the sense that Furina doesn't make his best teams, because I think she does, but in the sense that he's probably going to be the best main DPS on your account, and to me it makes more sense to put Furina on the weaker team you have. Like uh, to me it's better to put the best supports on the weaker DPS side to balance things in the base for both chambers. So in that vein it makes a lot of sense to look at alternatives to Furina for Neuvillette. My favorite non-Furina team with him is Vaporite, specifically burning teams with Shenling and Nahida. It's interesting to me to talk about this topic because I think many people underestimate Shenling when it comes to applying Pyro to let others proc reactions. Like with the Pyro need alone, Shenling can apply Pyro around 14 times in 15 seconds and then you add the Gobba on top of that and it becomes even more, which is pretty much unparalleled in the Pyro niche for this role. It works very good for Brizzly on the melt teams and it also works for Nubilet. And in combination with a great Dendrop player like Nahida, you can proc burning very frequently which makes the Vaporites quite consistent. And the results are just amazing honestly. Many people don't know about this, but his personal damage on these teams can even surpass what he does on most Furina teams. The fourth slot on this team can be whatever really, as long as it's someone that can trigger a reaction for New Villette's first passive. For example, you can use somebody like uh, Zhongli that can give New Villette's passive a stack to the crystallized reaction and also be a great shielder. Somebody like Kazwa is also an option, but since Nahida's Dendro application will make it very hard for any kind of Hydro Aura to ever stay on opponents, there's weirdly Hydra with Kazwa during the rotation becomes quite hard. For this reason, John Lee's universal resistance reduction effect ends up being more consistent. This team honestly is laps, there is no way around it. The kind of damage Numilet ends up dishing out here is no short of absurd. While he doesn't have great buffers on this team, he still gets some nice support, for example from Nahida's elemental burst that gives him elemental mastery and increases the vaporite's damage. Weapons like Sacrificial Jade or Widget also become more valuable on this team because they have have elemental mastery related passives. The one issue this team can have is in terms of energy, since for example Shenling can be pretty tricky to manage. I get it, it can feel a bit intimidating to play Shenling without a pennant because of how many issues she usually has in terms of energy, but it can be fine. The reason is that you don't really need her to deal much damage on this team, you can go all in on energy recharge. Like she's not getting buffed here, so even if you optimize it, it won't be great. It's pretty much a Nubilet solo team in terms of damage so all you need from Shenling is to have the burst ready to apply Pyro on opponents, so options like Kitten Spear or Favonius to maximize her energy economy become very good here. And even if you don't have her burst ready at a certain time, you can just use Goba. This little bear will be just enough to trigger burning on opponents and let Nubilet get the Vaporite's proxy once. Another team I like with Nubilet is Child, Zhongli, Kazua and uh, Nubilet, of course. Wait. What the fuck is Child doing here? Is this some kind of weird dual DPS composition? Actually, no, quite the opposite, because Child on this team is not even going on field. He has this passive that unconditionally allows him to increase the normal attack talent level of the whole team. Of course, this applies to New Millet's charge attack as well, since it's the same talent, and it increases its damage significantly. Pretty interestingly, this is also one of the best teams in terms of New Millet personal damage, even counting Fiorina ones. On the flip side, the total team damage isn't looking too hot here, because characters other than New Millet aren't dealing much 
damage. I guess Kazuo is doing something in AoE, but uh, really not that noteworthy. Mm. The main draw of this composition is that since Child doesn't need to go on field, the rotations are faster and you start dealing damage with new Villet faster. Of course, this is just a weaker alternative compared to the Fiorina teams, where Fiorina will be replacing Child, but it works quite well, especially if you have new Villet at Constellation 1, a point where he gets a stack for free, so even if you play double Hydro, it doesn't lose him damage. Another alternative to this will be replacing Child with Mona, which makes new Villet's damage higher at first, so until Mona's buff lasts, but I prefer the Child version because it's faster. Like uh, playing the Mona version just feels like playing a bootleg version of the Fiorina team, while the Child version feels like it has its own identity. Other teams include the Taser, for example, Taser with Fischl, Kazuha, Jungli. This can be quite nice, but there is definitely a lower level of damage amplification for New Villette specifically compared to the teams I talked about before. The idea is replacing that damage amplification with the off-field damage Fischl can deal, but the issue with that is that Fischl is only dealing single target damage while New Millet is dealing AoE damage, meaning that even if you believe that Fischl's damage will replace the damage amplification New Villet would get on other teams, it will be only on a single target. It's a fine team if your New Villet investment isn't very high, so you compensate with the presence of Fischl, but overall it's not the best. Other team ideas that follow this concept are all the Bloom teams with Dendro. For example, Nilu Bloom, Hype Bloom with Nahida, these can be nice choices if your new billet investment is low. Meaning, if for example you only have a free-to-play weapon on him like Prototype Ember and your artifacts are bad, then you can compensate with all the free damage the Dendro reactions bring. However, it's definitely something I would never suggest to anybody that plans to invest highly on his new billet. The reason is that new billet's Hydro application isn't the best, like uh, it's serviceable, but it's definitely not like a child level or even a Yelan or Shincho level. This means that the better your new billet is, the worse your bloom compositions are going to look in comparison to the more hyper based compositions for him. Okay, now finally let's talk Fiorina teams. I will say something that might sound a bit surprising to some. The main advantage Fiorina has on new billet teams isn't tied to the damage new billet is dealing himself. Like, I expect most people to believe that the reason Fiorina is his best teammate is that she amplifies his damage the best, but this isn't always true. If you check the numbers and the calculations, the damage new Millet is dealing on these teams is not too different from the damage he deals on the Vaporates teams, the Child teams, and something like that. However, it is at least comparable, and on top of that, Furina is dealing a lot of off-field damage. And that's the true difference compared to characters like Shell Linger Child that are just on those teams for new Villette's purpose. So, in this scenario, it's almost like you're combining the idea behind the official team with new Villette, where Fischl is dealing a lot of off-field damage, and the Child of Vaporate's team with new Villette, where new Villette is receiving a lot of damage amplification. And that's what makes the Furina teams the best to me. With Furina New Villette as a baseline, you can go a lot of different ways to build a team. The universal rule for Fiorina teams is that you're going to need a healer in order to maximize their stacks generation, but for New Villette teams this isn't always true because of how much he heals by himself through his charge attacks. Still, a lot of people like to put healers on this team, like uh, Charlotte, Jean, Baiju, so team-wide healer that can heal the whole team early in the rotations and generate a lot of Furina stacks before New Villet even goes on field. The Jean variants were more popular at first than they are now, because uh, she has some issues. Her main issue is that her swirling capabilities are pretty bad. As an Animo character, one of the main roles Jean has on New Villet teams is to reduce the resistance to Hydro on opponents through the very decent Venator set. To cover this role, she has to swirl Hydro two times in the rotation. First, when she comes in early to heal the whole team and swirl the opponents through the burst, which is fine because the burst is, a, is an AoE ability that will hit all opponents surrounding her, and second when she comes in again after New Villette has used two charge attacks to reswirl opponents after 10 seconds have passed. And this is where the issue lies, because uh, in this situation she can only swirl opponents through her elemental skill since her burst is on cooldown. Her skill is very single target focused, like uh, it can group opponents by pulling them towards Jean, but this only works for very small enemies. As as a result, most of the time you will only be swirling one opponent with this elemental skill, and this makes for a bad fit for a character like New Villette that likes to hit opponents in AoE. This is why when you choose your healer for your New Villette team, it's good to do it in a way that you can integrate a better Animo character than Jean. For example, Kazuha, who is very consistent and offers very nice damage amplification for New Villette through his damage buffs and also can group opponents. In this scenario, people like to use Charlotte, 
Baiju, even Cookie, and they work very well. The Charlotte variant offers the upside of freeds, which is a nice way to stun local opponents in a single place and then hit them relentlessly with the new Let's Charge attack. This can also be a double edged sword, because, for example, against bosses, the only thing Freeds does is removing the Hydro Aura from them. I don't know how many people know about this, but uh, the Freeds reaction works in a way that uh, when you proc it on enemies that can be frozen, while they only have Cryo applied on them, they also have a Hydro Aura underlying. This means that when you hit them with an Animo attack with a specific gauge level, like uh, for example, Kazuo's Elemental Burst, Kazuo's Hold Elemental Skill, you will be swirling both Hydro and Cryo at the same time on those opponents. On the flip side, since bosses can be frozen, the only thing Freeds will do on them is removing the Hydro Aura and placing the Cryo Aura. This is all to say that the presence of Charlotte on these teams can make Hydro's words more inconsistent against bosses. This is why people generally prefer Baiju in this role, because he is more neutral. True, technically the Dendro application can also eat the Hydro Aura and make Swords more inconsistent, but in Baiju's case, since its Dendro application isn't the highest, it's not a problem generally. Also, Baiju is providing some little shields that are protecting new led from getting interrupted, something that is nice if you don't have his Constellation 1. Anyway, as I said earlier, you can also go without healers here, for example by replacing the healer with Zhongwei. At a glance, in terms of offense, this might not look great, because essentially, at face value, you're just replacing good, consistent stack generation from Funina's Burst for some resistance reduction effects from Zhongli's shield. However, Zhongli is a special interaction with a specific artifact set that can help him overcome this offensive issue, and obviously this artifact set is the Petra set. When the holder of this set picks up a Crystallite shield from the field, it will give an elemental damage bonus to the whole team based on the element of the Crystallite shard. Basically, if Zhongli picks up a Hydro Crystallite, it can be a mini Kazu for this team. And if there is something better than having one Kazuo on the team, that's having uh, two Kazuas. Now, truthfully, this isn't nearly as consistent as what Kazuo can do, because uh, the holder of this set needs to be on field and pick the Crystallites in order to buff other characters. Typically, on these teams, Zhongli only goes on field when he has to use his shield, so early in the rotation. New Let has pretty long rotations, where he can use even 3 or 4 charge attacks, and in terms of timing, if Zhongli picks up a shard when he uses his shield, he will only be buffing the first two charge attacks for new Let's rotation. But actually, that's good enough. Because usually, by the time you use your third or fourth charge attack with new Let, you already have kind of max on Furina stacks by then. This is because each charge attack from new Let will be generating around 80 stacks for Furina's burst. So, the main issue compared to healer teams is more so early in the rotation, and that's exactly where the Petra set goes in action. And in terms of damage, on average, this is actually the best new Let team, which is great, considering Zhongli also provides very consistent shield. I guess the main flaw could be that picking up the shard is a bit clunky at times, especially with Zhongli. Not only the shard is extremely small and hard to see, but the fact that Zhongli also summons a pillar on field that uh, you will climb on if you dash towards it makes the experience of getting the shard as fast as possible really, really annoying at times. Anyway, you can also play Zhongli this way on child teams, on Mona teams for new Let because uh, it's the same concept. In terms of builds, Numilet has a pretty obvious artifact set choice, which is the Mother Shusi set. It's his signature set, it's much better than all the other options, so just farm that. In terms of stat building, I've already put his energy requirements in all the infographics I've shown about his teams before, so just go check that. Regarding main stats, for the Sans, it's obviously HP. For Goblet and Circuit, Hydro Damage Bonus and Crit are for the most part his best options, but you can also go HP main pieces here as well. Note that the presence of external HP buffs on the team, like uh, for example the Hydro Resonance, or even HP percentage weapons like uh, Prototype Amber or Sacrificial Jade lower the value of HP main pieces, so in those scenarios Hydro Damage Bonus Goblet and uh, the Crit Circlet become more valuable. Weapons wise, it's his signature, then Sacrificial Jade, and then the rest. He doesn't really have many great options because he's an HP scaling character, so if you can get his signature, if you can at least get his Battle Pass weapon, the Sacrificial Jade, it will be pretty great. Otherwise, there is the prototype Ember as an option that uh, 
isn't too good, but uh, I guess it's fine. Some people would guess that it works pretty well on Furina teams because of the healing effect it provides, but in reality, it's not that simple. The reason is that while the healing effect from the weapon can help Furina generate more stacks, the other parts of the weapon aren't that good. For one, its energy recovery effect on the passive is less useful on Furina teams where Numulet has pretty low energy requirements thanks to all the hydro particles he gets from Furina. Secondarily, the high HP bonus the weapon provides with its secondary stat doesn't scale too well with the HP bonuses from Hydro Resonance, or at least not as well as crit bonuses from Sacrificial Jade or Eternal Flow do. Okay, last topic. What you should prioritize between his signature weapon and his constellation one? As a reminder, his constellation one gives him a stack for free from his first passive, and it also gives him interruption resistance. This means that, for example, on double hydro teams, you will be getting three stacks from the passive instead of two, which maximizes the damage buffs he gets for his charge attack. This applies to all of his Furina teams, so it's pretty massive. In the scenario where it counts, it's around a 20% damage bonus. In terms of damage increase, though, between the constellation one and the signature weapon, which one is better generally depends on the situation you're in. For example, if you have Prototype Ember as your weapon for Nubilet, then the signature will be a bigger damage increase over the Constellation one on any team. On the other hand, if you have something like Sacrificial Jade even at Refinement 1, then the damage increases become similar between the Constellation one and the signature. So this is definitely a scenario that favors the Constellation one, since that one also provides the interruption resistance effect. Generally, having interruption resistance isn't a must on Nubilet because on many of his teams you use him with Zhongli or somebody like Baiju, so it's not a must for him to have it. But still, it's extra quality of life, which is nice. So if you already have a good weapon like Sacrificial Jade, then the Constellation one is definitely better, otherwise the signature is a bit better to me. Alright, I'm done for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and uh, peace!